in earlier session when we were talking about uh, development of hydraulic circuit we learned about through the objectives how a single acting cylinder works and even we tried to verify the developed circuit through a simulation today in the session we will try to explore more about of course through the same learning objectives how a double acting cylinder works and in that sense the problem statement is very simple controlling of a double acting hydraulic cylinder in fact the application that you all can see in uh, the industrial sense it could be like clamping of uh, a workpiece or a component clamping of tool or even clamping of a sheet metal in the presses or punches to learn about this double acting hydraulic cylinder today also we will follow the same process initially we will develop a circuit and then we will try to simulate it using a simulation tool which we have used in our earlier session a fluid sim give me couple of minutes so that we can initially develop and then we will switch on to the fluid sim so as to verify the developed circuit to start with the basic operations that we all are interested to see are the movement of a cylinder in forward and in reverse direction as the name indicates double acting means a flow of a fluid should enter towards piston side and even towards a rod end side who should enter a flow of a fluid which was not the case in single acting cylinder a fluid should enter towards both the ends of a piston so as to observe forward and reverse movement then when we say it as double acting cylinder and the major components which are used to develop a hydraulic circuit namely reservoir filter pump a safeguarding device which is of a normally closed category and a double acting cylinder which carries two points the major rule is of a space which presently i am denoting which encompasses a direction control valve which type of direction control valve what should be the operating process or a procedure of that direction control valve and even on top of it how a direction control valve should come to its original position these are some of the major points which should be noted and taken into consideration while developing a circuit for the intended application let us take an example or let us presume that the double acting cylinder which is required at this particular moment needs to needs to be stopped at a particular location and while the double acting cylinder is stopped at a particular location 
the operator's hand should be free. If this is a case in the application, then the moment we say operator's hand should be free during the operation, there starts a logical building of selection of a direction control wall. And for that matter, we will be switching from this development over to the simulation tool wherein we will di directly observe which kind of direction control valve is suitable for this particular application. Till the moment we switch on from this development over to a simulation, I would request you to identify a direction control valve which could be probably used for the said application. Give me a moment so that I can switch. Now, in this case, the process would be initiated with a pump, then a reservoir, then a filter. I hope you all can see this with a double acting cylinder and the important part of course before we could learn about what is the importance of use of a direction control valve let me just add the earlier elements which are required I mean a pressure relief valve and I will be connecting these so that we can in latter phase check the demonstration of a particular circuit while connecting the filter is connected to a reservoir pump which is placed over the top of a filter the connection from a direction control valve is given to a pump. I mean a one point is connected to a direction control valve and the remaining point which is defined as T is connected to a reservoir. Now, A pressure relief valve with safeguards a system. One end, I mean the input side is connected with a pressure line and the output side is connected with a reservoir. The two points which are available over a direction control valve are eventually connected with points which are available with the double acting cylinder the two points which I am referring to one is input side I mean a piston side and second as a rod end side why I was talking about what should be the selection of direction control valve cause let me remind you, we were talking about a state wherein operator's hand should be free and in that case, a double acting cylinder should not retract or should not be in its forward mode, whatever location at which the piston and rod has stopped because of the movement of a direction control valve, it should retain its position. Let us check. Now in this case, when I say the moment force is exerted, exerted over a lever, we all will observe that 
piston and rod will come out of their position they'll start moving and we all will observe a forward movement let us check whether we see a forward movement or not yes we have observed but in this case what i did still i am exerting a force over a lever still i am exerting a force over a lever what does that mean if you all have already checked and carefully noted the earlier starting position of a direction control valve was the cross connections p was connected to b and a was cross connected to a t the moment operator releases a force over a lever a spring will come into action so as to connect p to b and a to t have you all noted the same is this our problem statement no it was not what was our problem statement the direction control valve in this particular circuit should work in such a way that even though operator releases a force over a lever cylinder should not change its position i mean the rod which has either extended or retracted should retain its position hence do we need to change the type of a direction control valve the answer is yes we need to change that let us change the direction control valve for that matter carefully observe what i am doing i am changing the direction control valve from earlier four v two position nav over to four v three position what i am doing i am changing a direction control valve the remaining parts are same we need to connect points which are available over a direction control valve with the points available over a cylinder even we need to bridge the earlier connections which were been deleted now with the inclusion of 4 by 3 way direction control valve let us check whether it operates as per the requirement the requirement is once operator shifts the position now the direction control valve at its center position which conveys all four points are closed p point which is connected to a pump is closed t point which is connected to a reservoir is closed even the remaining two points which are connected to the two ends of cylinder are also closed the moment operator switches the position from all four points closed over to the two straight lines which eventually connects p to a and b to t let us see how they are connected we'll observe that there is a forward movement again in order to bring back to the original position i'm referring to the cylinder what is required it is required to change the position so we have changed the position the cross connections were established thereby we observed the cylinder has retracted while cylinder retracts you might have observed that operator needs to switch every now and then the position in this case with our problem statement if the cylinder is retracted or cylinder is in its forward movement which presently i am playing let me 
take it back again this is our center position observe the movement of a cylinder along with the changes that i am incorporating into a direction control valve let me list down those changes that i'll be making so that you all can observe first i'll be initiating a direction control valve and its forward movement so as to connect p to a and b to t please note down this p to a and b to t and while you all are observing that piston and rod is extending in between i'll be again switching the direction control valve so as to close all four points carefully look at it what i'm doing i have plussed and again i have changed the direction control valve the moment i plussed p to a and b to t connection piston and rod start started extending in between the process we have again changed the position of a direction control valve what you all can observe the extension has stopped we are we all are not observing forward movement of piston and a rod is this our problem statement yes this is our problem statement what does that mean what is a take away from this session as while we need to have the process of forward in between stoppages and retract it is not like use any kind of direction control valve there has to be a direction control valve which will be used and which will serve in between stoppages during an operation which type of direction control valve we all have used in this particular circuit is the question that will be unanswered you all have to identify the type of a direction control valve which is serving for our intended purpose cause identifying this type of direction control valve is a key element in such kinds of industrial applications i hope the problem is clear the problem statement is addressed in next session we will try to cover the two double acting cylinders and their connections so as to complete the another problem statement thank you thank you all